Hi hobby friends, let's talk about panel lines. Are you excited for the new Eldar leaks and rumours? Because I am very, very excited for all the new Eldar leaks and rumours. Like any self-respecting plastic addict, I had to get a fix before the new stuff landed, and that fix came in the form of three fire prisms. If the absolutely timeless and amazing Jez Goodwin design on the original Falcon body, crowned by an enormous crystal lance turret thing, isn't enough to sell you on the awesomeness of the Assyriani, I don't know what would be. I also thought this would be a good chance to take a look at another oil paint superpower, speedy panel lining. We will be going through the whole process for these tanks though, so bear with me, and also there is going to be airbrushing. It's nothing you can't do with a regular brush, but the airbrush just goes faster. If you'd like to see some regular brush blend work, let me know. Okay, so you have your black primed prism. I keep the canopies off, but the crystals in. First proper painting step is to mix up some Vallejo Sombre Grey with some thinner and get that in your airbrush. Use that grey to gently highlight your volumes. No easy task on the slinky curves of an Eldari vehicle. What I'm aiming for are any sticky out bits like the tops of the engine inlets and also around the bottom of the skirt of the tank, which I think gives it a nice floaty feeling. With the airbrush cleaned out and loaded with white ink, I moved on to tackling those crystals. All we're doing here is concentrating on getting a nice bright white highlight that fades out into a very dark grey or black depending on what mood you're looking for. With that done, load up with, well, any transparent coloured ink you like, but I went with turquoise. I want to leave a fair bit of white here to get that powerful, energetic, glowing feeling, and I'm also not too fussed about getting a bit of overspray on the little ignition trigger thing at the base, or the cagey bits at the tip. We'll call that OSL and move on. One more clean out of the airbrush and then load it up with a nice secondary colour, magenta in my case. I sprayed that on even further away from my highlight, letting the thin layers blend with the blue and tint the black a little bit. Nearly done with the gun now, just need to touch up the housing for the base crystal. I sometimes see people leave this sprayed out, and I think it's in an effort to emulate a glowing effect, but for me, a strong silhouette for objects that are right up against the light source sells the effect much better. There are all sorts of fantastic tutorials out there, but let me know down below if you want to hear my thoughts on OSL sometime. Next up, a super super rough pass on the internals of the cockpit. This will be barely visible when I'm done, so I only hit things with one thick coat if I think they might show through. The clear canopies I paint with Tamiya Clear Acrylic Black. This is a solvent-based paint, so probably a good idea to avoid using your best brushes with this. Two coats should be enough to get you a nice smoked glass look, and Tamiya have a few colours in the range, so check them out. The engines get a coat of Vallejo Metal Colour Gun Metal, and really, they should get some highlighting with Duraluminium or something like that as well. But you know what, these are for my personal collection and I have a mountain of rats for a commission project staring accusingly at me, so we'll call that done too. Using the same sombre grey I used in the airbrush earlier, I whiz around an edge highlight on all the sharp edges. Here are my three quick tips on edge highlighting. You'll have heard one of them, but maybe not the other two. 1. Use the edge of the brush, not the tip. Two. Use a thin brush for thin highlights. This took me way too long to work out, but edge highlighting is much easier with a skinny brush. And three, if you can, make sure you have nice edges to highlight. Some of these older vehicle models have weird sharp corners that are a pain to highlight. Carefully running the back of your blade along them should blunt them just a little bit and make them easier to get a smooth line. Unfortunately, because of my need for speed, I skipped this tip and suffered for it here. Going fast doesn't always mean skipping steps. Here's another goof. I hate sub-assemblies, and so I stuck on the weapons when I built the tank. But I want the weapons to be bone white. 
This step would have taken me maybe five minutes if I'd left them separate and undercoated them in white, but instead it took me roughly a million years and 10,000 coats of Vallejo bone white over one coat of heavy skin tone. What a nightmare. Okay, so we're finally on to the panel lining. My colours are titanium white and yellow ochre, mixed to get a match of the bone white I've used elsewhere. This is heavily thinned with white spirits, and actually I ended up going even a bit thinner than you see here. Take a fine brush, dip it into your thinned oil mix, and then simply touch it into the recesses you're trying to line. Because my mix was a bit thick, you don't see the full magical effect here, but the super low surface tension of the white spirits should mean your paint races up the grooves, basically doing all of your work for you. All you have to do is touch along the panel lines and let the paint run free. And that's not all. You might notice my lines are blotchy as all hell and look a total mess. Not a problem with oils. Simply clean out the brush, you'll want a towel to wipe off excess paint and a tub of nice clean white spirits for that, and then with a white spirits dampened brush simply wipe up your mistakes. This is the real magic of oils, long drying times. It means you can work and work on something erasing and reapplying more or less as long as you have patience for it. And so long as you're being gentle, even without a varnish layer, you should have no issues with your acrylics underneath. They don't react to white spirits at all. After that, I just touched up and added some of the details and that was about it. Here's one more idea before I go though. All of those tech blisters that lots of people paint as gems but are categorically not gems as stated by Jez Goodwin himself in the design notes on Eldar vehicles, well, another option for making them cool is just to give them a quick lick of gloss varnish. The varnish will deepen whatever colours they are and the little specular highlight will make them pop on the tabletop. And there you go, Tron-esque fire prisms. And of course, wherever there's a panel line, you can use this technique. Speed painting smurfs? No hassle. Got some true blue chaps you want to panel line and weather in more or less one step? Done and done. If you want to see more of my stuff, check the links below, and I'll see you next time.